for today's cup of coffee, and we had alluded to this in yesterday's cup of coffee. Yes. So instead of it being weeks and months after I allude to something, we actually did follow through. Yeah. And this came from a source that I usually try to avoid. I truly do in any form, mm. but it had the story that I that I needed, so I did use them. There's what? reasons. What is it? Vice. Oh God. And everybody, everybody is going to have the same that knows who these people are. It's like, oh, why did you? Because they had the story. So you know, that was that was where I went. And this is by Tamlin McGee and was written on the May 10th, 2021, and it's entitled, For UFO Hunters, the Owls Really Aren't What They Seem. Yes. Are they really? Well, we're going to find out. And so the link will be in the description box, so everything is cited, because I've heard stories about these people, lots of them. What, copyright and shit? No, I mean anything. It's just, I've heard lots of not good things. But, just because some there do things. Seems like Tim Poole used to work for Vice. I never heard of that. I, I do believe that he did. And, you know, you all can comment and let me know whether I'm correct on that or not. So, Beanie Boy, I do believe, used to work for Vice. Oh, God. Why does that ever shock me? The fucking cancer. Well, he's... Beanie. He's been... A, the bean-looking ass. He's been red-peeled over the past couple of years. He's still a fence-sitter. You know, he sort of wafts with the wind. But yeah, I have some respect because the guy's been swatted during his podcast numerous times. At some point, it looks like the authorities are going, okay, they're just, you know. At some point, they do put them on a list, be like, if they are, if they, someone calls in, be like, swatting, it's not right an emergency. Right. Uh, but I think legally, they have to still go out and check it out. They'll send like it out. one or two people, but like, it's not. I mean, who does that? Honestly. Yeah. Because that has gotten people killed before. Absolutely. That's a very dangerous thing. And, and it's like, you know, that's not some thing that you do as a joke. No. And I think that if they can <clears throat> find these people, and I'm sure that they do have people that do try to trace these people, that's some serious shit. That's, that's a, good, a federal charge. That's a good thing about a VPN. Yeah. We yeah. need a VPN. We have a VPN. No, we do We not. do. I will show you after we finish. Okay. That we do have that. That comes. It's a package that I got with our computers and stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. So that was Mr. McAfee who had put that. You know, he he was not suicided, or he was suicided, but that he did not kill himself. He had that tattooed on himself prior to his death, nah. which has not been that long ago. He was an odd person, but brilliant. Damn. I need to actually How'd he die? delve more. I can't remember exactly. Uh, not, not right off the top of my head right now, but yeah, but he had had that on there that he did not kill himself, which has nothing to do with it. I don't know. Maybe there was an owl present near whatever, and it just wasn't reported. So the article st uh, starts out, quote, the owls are not what they seem, yes. end quote. Sometimes they are omens. Well, it says this was the spiritual omens. This was the cryptic warning uttered by the giant in Twin Peaks, echoing eerily throughout David Lynch and Mark Frost's surreal series. I need to go back and watch all of that. Because I, I would miss parts of it while it was actually on TV. Mm -hmm. And it has become so iconic. And I think it's interesting that it has reemerged after quite a, quite a while. Yeah. So, need to go back and watch that again. 
It says, for illustrator and author Mike Cleland, though, these psychic pronouncements ring especially true. For the past decade, he has worked tirelessly to catalog paranormal sightings of owls. The self-described owl guy of the UFO world, Cleland has become the foremost writer theorizing a connection between owls and alien encounters. His book on the subject, The Messengers, is a collection of anecdotes from people who claim to have had paranormal experiences involving owls. It began after Cleland saw owls circling overhead for an entire hour during a 2006 camping trip. Well, now that is a very rare thing. Yeah. Most of the time, you hear owls around here, but you seldom see them. Yeah. So, you know, and I don't know that I would necessarily want to. Unless you have a barn. Well, even, yeah. Barn owl. Yeah. Familiar with the supposed UFO <clears throat> owl link, Cleland intuitively felt that there was something mystical, otherworldly, or even alien to the uh, animals above. Moved by the events, Cleland eventually connected owl sightings to disturbing alien abduction experiences of his own, spurring him to post a call for any strange owl anecdotes on his website. Now, I did not include the link to his website, but you should be able to just, you know, type in his name. You know, reference my reference and you'll be all right. <laughs> to his surprise... Cross-examine. Well, yeah. To his surprise, the stories streamed in, tying the birds to UFOs, abductions, missing time, and other strange phenomena. Meanwhile, owls began to manifest themselves to Cleveland in a flurry of weirdness. For instance, appearing to hover at eye level before fluttering away as he rode his bike through the smile, uh, through his small Idaho town. Now he's collected thousands of accounts, with at least one landing in his inbox every day. So that would, you know, that's a little bit of validation for him. That's quite a bit of validation for him. Yeah. And Cleland writes in his book, quote, that people are actually having experiences that imply contact with some sort of non-human intelligence is strange enough. Adding owls into the mix makes it all the more bizarre. Like a, perform- bizarre. <laughs> like a performance on a stage, the owl is playing a small role in the grand drama. The part it plays is a riddle begging to be solved, end quote. I think he's been taking writing lessons from Mr. Swanser. Yeah. Mm. It would appear that Mike Cleland is not much closer to solving this riddle, though he has some ideas, conceding that his owl hypothesis is, quote, way out beyond the boundaries of the UFO mainstream, end quote. He insists that he's uh, brought over some stodgy folks to his way of thinking after talks at conferences. Quote, I've had my own direct experiences, and some would call these UFO abductions, uh, that Cleveland told Motherboard in a phone interview. He further states, that's a term I use all the time, but it's not the right term because it's stranger than that. It's more elusive, more mysterious, end quote. Before the, before the owls, Cleveland's own experiences included waking at his small house in Maine at the age of 30 to find a bright light flooding his bedroom and five spindly aliens standing in his yard, backlit by a singular round shape. At first, he dismissed this as a dream, but it was unlike any dream he'd had before. Extreme... Oh extremely vivid and accompanied by an uneasy feeling of distorted reality an occurrence so common it's been dubbed the oz factor by ufologists and it occurred again and again now people have dreams like that though and they are genuinely dreams yes some of them are but also as we've spoke many times uh, some things are other things it's yeah. just like some dreams are prophetic or whatever. There is a difference between a dream and a vision, you know. So that's the mind trying to deal with something that is outside its norm, its understanding. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think personally, I think it would be terrifying whether it was a real thing or even a dream to find these alien beings near your house. Or peeping through your window or anything or in your room. That would just be, yeah. I mean, yeah, that does give you a spook in the dream, but like. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm one of these. I have weird, vivid dreams. You have weird, vivid dreams. Yeah. I mean, I had one the other day that I could tell you as far as the color of the paneling on the doors and stuff, and it had recently been oiled down. The wood grain. I could see the wood grain in it. And what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that was just part Repeat of a dream. that for me? As far as that type of detail in dreams, I, I have dreams that do that. It's not all the time, but, you know... It says, frenetically tumbling down this rabbit hole, Cleveland expected to find a magazine article or two on the subject. Instead, he discovered a bottomless pit of strangeness where owls seemed to be interwoven into the UFO experience like a very thin thread. With his research, he felt he was tugging on that thread and fell deeper down the rabbit hole. Strange stories within his book include the testimony of Ron Johnson, a regular UFO conference attendee who claimed to have had alien visitations at home and who noticed a steady stream of guest owls by the porch of his mother's house. He drug his mom in on this stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> One in particular. What did the poor mama do? She birthed Just leave him. her alone. That's it. She birthed him. That was all it took. One in particular would watch him as he left for work and remain perched on the same branch when he returned later that day. Once, Johnson says, he felt an inexplicable desire to leave the house in the middle of the night, and when he did, found a four-foot-tall owl standing in his driveway waiting to exchange stares. The fuck? Yeah. It says these impossibly large owls, as Cleveland calls them, are a regular enough incident. One unnamed contactee claimed to have seen a UFO and then shortly afterwards pulled over in his car where he was greeted by a four-foot-tall owl with a wingspan large enough to encase the front of the vehicle's chassis, wing-to-mirror to wing-to-mirror. To wing to Cleland notes that even the very tallest owls should not be this tall. Now, that would be horrifying. I mean, there are some pretty big owls out there. Not four-foot-tall. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if that's something we're going to have to look up. No, I, we we did that before when we went through everything for about a month involved owls. That was weird. We will look it up if there is such thing as a four foot owl. This man studies this stuff. I'm going to believe him on this. this I he wrote a book. Hold up. You go right down with your back. Absolutely. Self. I you will. Do that. Can I keep reading or yeah. am I going to wait? From the archives of UFO researcher and fellow owl enthusiast. This is this is a Scandinavian name. It's Hawken Blomquist. Vist uh, is a story from Sorbo, Sweden, in summer of 1966. Two men traveling by moped pulled over for a bathroom break, and when they did, noticed an owl sitting on a post beside the road. Shortly afterwards, they claimed to have seen a large silvery craft hovering 150 meters above the ground, and when it landed, there appeared to be movement by strange humanoid figures within. Among the many anecdotes, Cleveland... Uh, tells that some of the most common experiences surround missing time. Contactees stop to admire an owl, and when they're on their way again, they realize hours have passed. A theory is these owl appearances could be screen memories, cyclically implanted visions where owls were merely, merely disguised stand-ins with hypnotic regression therapy later revealing something much weirder. In fact, they're so common that according to Cleland, when he brought up the owl phenomenon to the late veteran alien ab abduc abduction, abduction, abduction. <laughs> abduction, abduction researcher Bud Hopkins, he would roll his eyes and say that the stories are everywhere so the owl thing yeah now hold up the, I, I just looked this up this is like some of the largest owls in the world the great horned owl it is 3.2 pounds and wingspan is 4.6 feet but how tall is it <clears throat> none of them say how tall they are right but snowy owl 4.5 pounds, so I assume they're pretty tall. Not really. <coughs> no. They're they're actually kind of compact. Wingspan, 4.8 feet. That's not how tall they are. That's the wingspan. Now, this one has a big-ass head. <laughs> and 
I assume that it reaches about the height of a small toddler. Yeah, but the that's great, not four foot. The great gray owl. Yeah, but where is that? Actually, that's not the heaviest one. The heaviest one is the Eurasian eagle owl. That is six to eight pounds. Right. So. That's still not that. It's a matter. We, we're like Zim. We're looking for the tallest. I'm pretty sure. This one. They will rule us this out. This one is six to 8.8 8 pounds. Wingspan 6.5 feet. That's wingspan. That's not height. There's a difference. Yeah, but well, you have to have something to balance out the wingspan. Uh, it, but it's not like I said. We're talking about a four foot tall thing here. Tallest. So it says not all Owl. of the not all of the reports in his book feature a supposed alien connection, although there are many of those. Some instead point to a seemingly ungraspable mystical link, such as the foreboding warnings or personal spiritual awakening. Cleland avoids concluding that owls are doing the bidding of aliens, though, quote, I don't think the UFO occupants are pushing a little bu button saying, calling all owls, meet us at the spot to give this person a psychic experience, he said. Further stated, quote, I think it's happening in a much more mystical, overlapping way than that, end quote. That mystical foreboding is found all over contemporary culture and sometimes it features aliens too the enigmatic owls of twin peaks are theorized by some to have been influenced by an owl encounter in whitley striber's influential alien abduction book communion and says that slaughterhouse fives fives traumatized time traveler billy pilgrim i'm not familiar with that one i'll have to go and, and research him seemed to be uh, worn by an owl when he was abducted suddenly by a flying saucer from the planet Trelfamador. Don't look that up for the pronunciation because, yeah, I know. It says, uh -huh. further back throughout history, many cultures have held up owls as creatures of spiritual significance, whether portents of doom and death or symbolic of wealth and wisdom. And I'm going in there, and you can go to the link, and they have some other things as far as what the um, owl can mean in different cultures and stuff like that. And, you know. That if you're a rodent and you see an owl, yeah, it's all over. I mean, these are pretty big owls. Yeah, they're they're good sized owls, but they're not. Some actually full can foot. stand on their back legs like properly, like sort of straight up, which does heighten them. Well, yeah. There's one that is literally three feet tall. Yes, but that's not the same as four foot. Anyhow, this man has been researching this for quite a few years, and uh, you know I'm not saying he's yes totally correct owl. about everything. There is an owl that can stand up to four foot. Okay, where is it located? It's not here in America. Well, then that sort of uh, takes that out Actually, of Actually, the... there was. My bad. It's extinct. Well, that doesn't help. That, maybe that's what it was. They all went up in the UFOs. That's what happened to those four-foot-tall owls. You want to see the owl with the it's, big head and the small face? It was very much like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that I watched and that the overlords were mice. <laughs> yes. And if anybody asks what the ultimate question is, the answer, or ultimate answer, it's 42. Yes. 74. <laughs> you want to so, see the owl with the big head and sure, the small face? Sure, but we can't. We have cats that look similar to that. We really do. You want to see when it blends into a tree? Oh, they, they want to see. The, the viewers and listeners would well, like to see these things, and we don't have that capability at this point. That's what I'm asking you. Because anybody can do great production. We choose not to. This is our shtick. So, as far as there being a connection between owls and UFOs, eh, maybe. And some of the other ones we went through as far as the hobgoblins, everything that was a supernatural, paranormal <laughs> entity, they were claiming it was an owl. 
when there's no yeah. way it could have been an owl. That was only a matter of like a month ago, I think. Oh, no. It's actually been longer than that because time has gotten very, very it's strange. Because we upload daily, so it's like, oh, God, when have we uploaded this? Well, you know, and I need to actually start keeping... You know, rather than having to go back through there, I need to keep in a notebook. Yeah. Because old school, I actually use paper and pens and I all that good find stuff. I the picture of the owl with its head blending in. So, I think it was pretty interesting. I, I wasn't aware that Whitley Stryber had a connection with an owl in his encounter. I didn't know that either. Uh, if you have not watched the movie, it's interesting. Uh, I'm trying to, I always think, I forget Guy's name every time. He's the very odd man that, um, yeah. Yes. So, I'll think of it here in a minute. If I, if I remember the man's name that played Whitley Stryper, I will put it in the description box. People are probably out there screaming, it's so-and-so, it's If so you know who it is, comment below. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I've got some kind of block on his name maybe that's he was thing. he was the one that was in the fat boy slim video weapon of choice loves it it's that's a he's awesome the, he's video also the one that played the headless horseman in yes Hollow, directed by tim burton yeah he's played on a lot of things and i don't know why i have a block to the band's name probably because nobody can remember his name that's why no, nobody names him by name no everybody remembers his name except me right now <laughs> so owls Owls. If you've had supernatural or paranormal experiences, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, owls, if you've got local, you regional, or family that? myths or legends, send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And the email address owls is also in the description box. Owls are a myth. That's possible. <laughs> we have never seen an owl. I have seven. questioned my reality for years. Truly, that's one of the things I have been in and out of therapy since I was 19 years old, and it's all a matter of existential crises, and it shows no sign of stopping. Anyhow, oh. know that you're loved, know that you're appreciated, and seriously, if you have prayer requests or anything like that, email those to us also. Yes. Yeah. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, <coughs> yes. <laughs> don't forget. we're doing better but we still have remnants of the cold yes well i'm fine it's just like that one is just mm. like share comment subscribe click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads damn it <laughs> they're lies Owls. <laughs> we'll see you on the next cup. Yeah. Bye. Bye.